Alright guys, I'm back here to get today with a unboxing video, one that I will know a lot of you guys will probably be excited for. I've had a lot of requests to get this kit, and I'm super excited to have it. So, without further ado, the kit I will be unboxing today is the HMM Berserk Fury, or Furher as it says on the box. That's the Japanese name of the uh, Zoid. Uh, it was changed for the American release. But... I grew up with it being Berserk Fury, so it's probably going to stay that. Uh, here's the line art for the Zoid. And some close-up pictures of the front of the box, which, in case you didn't get to see it well enough, there's the front of the box. One of the best-looking Zoids boxes I've ever seen. Absolutely love this box. And I'm not going to lie, the, uh, the box art for these HMMs is one of the biggest factors for me buying it. I just, it, it, it looks so cool. So here's some different kind of stuff the Zoid will do. Uh, it has a full inner frame on this guy, which is awesome. Uh, just like the Liger Zero, full inner frame. You can display it just like that if you want, and I probably will for some point of time. Uh, really, really great stuff. And there's one more picture of the kit. All right, so I already got the box open over here. Go through unboxing this guy. Let's start out with these lavender parts. This is the armor parts for the Fury, and they're in this light shade of lavender. Uh, it's more of a just regular lavender. It's a slight bit darker than it seems to be showing up on my video. But uh, there was actually a lot of debate over whether this guy would be um, in lavender slash purple or just plain white. I've never actually seen a Berserk Fury in white, but... For some reason, a lot of people thought that it would be. I don't know. I didn't quite understand uh, the th thought of it being in white, but much, uh, or I'm much more happy than it that it is in lavender and purple. That's the way the old Hasbro slash Tommy releases were. So I'm glad they're keeping that up. So, like I said, that was just armor port parts, and here's a duplicate runner of that. These are mostly kind of stuff for like the legs and things. Let's see, we have one more small runner of purple parts here. Covers for the uh, the feet and a few things like that. Those are some parts for the back of the head. Back here we have a runner of black parts, mostly for the little backpack kind of thing it has. Alright, here's some more black parts, mostly small parts without too much detail on them. And in here is a couple of duplicate runners. Small black parts, got a lot more detail on these than the ones I was showing you in the last pack. I wish I could get it to focus on these pieces because these few are very nicely detailed. But there is some more black parts. Up next, we have these clear red parts uh, for the eyes, and to be completely honest, I'm not entirely sure where these other clear parts are going to go, but excited to find out. And then we have a few gold parts. Now, these are uh, the marbled gold as opposed to the gold that came with the Schneider, and un unfortunately, because the gold that came with the Schneider was great, but... This is the marble, but the pieces are so small that it's not really noticeable. So, if you're painting your kit and you don't feel like painting these little gold pieces, that's entirely plausible because they look fine. Alright, here is the Buster Claws. Two identical runners of that, and that's my biggest problem with this kit. These Buster Claws, they I wish they could have just molded them as one big piece. But instead, we have this half and this half. It's not a big deal for the top because this piece has the whole top of it there, you can see. But along that bottom, which I'll show you over here, you're going to have to clip them together at the bottom there. And you're going to have a seam line running all the way down the bottom of those buster claws. And that is going to be a massive pain to remove. So that uh, disappointed me quite a bit, to be honest. I think they could have just done it as one piece or something. But... I know it's just going to be a lot of work and kind of annoying, but something you're going to have to do. 
uh, two big runners of polycaps. Usually they don't have many polycaps on these Zoids, but this is definitely the most I've seen. Because uh, this is two duplicate runners, all of polycaps. Next up, we have a pretty much undetailed uh, two duplicate runners of black parts. A lot of these pieces are kind of like the polycaps, just in hard plastic. Pretty undetailed. Uh, next up, we have the tail segments for the Zoid. Um, pretty detailed, as you can see. A lot of detailing can be done. They have some silver parts for the mouth and then the little blades on the tail. These uh, these mouth parts with the teeth look really, really nice. I, I love how those are looking. We also have two runners of silver for the feet here. All the claws and the claws of the arms. And lastly in this side of the box is the end caps. Two runners of the thick long end caps and two runners of these short little just top caps. Just for mostly the ones that go underneath the armor, uh, but you can still see them. That way it just is much easier with spacing and stuff. Okay, so here we have black runners. These are two different runners. Stuff in there for like the head. And uh, looks like some body pieces on the other side. There's some pieces for the neck. See here on the other side we have two main body pieces and then the pieces that go over top of that to kind of bulk it out a little bit. But some nice detailed stuff in there. Looks very good. It'll be a lot of fun. Okay, and here's the last lavender colored parts. Mainly parts for the body. Uh, let's see. Just kind of random armor parts here and there. I think those are for the arms, but I might be wrong about that. And parts for the back legs. I actually think those are probably for the arms. Ah, no, those ones are. I'll get this right eventually. Uh, some more black parts here. Very detailed, nice parts. Should have took these out of the bag. It would have cut down on the reflection a lot. But uh, some very large parts. These parts here are much larger than I've typically seen in the HMMs I've built. Granted, I'm this is only my fourth one, but it's still a lot larger than they typically are. But uh, very detailed, very nicely sculpted. I like them quite a bit. And last here we have a couple of duplicate runners. This is the first of which, which includes... Uh, to be honest, I'm not entirely sure what these are. Oh, I think these are the little uh, braces for the back of the feet. Um, I'm not sure what that little bladed part is. And otherwise, you just have some parts here for the buster claws, like the little lock thing for the buster claws. And here is the other runner of that. Like I said, that was a duplicate runner. So in the bottom of the box here, we get the manual for it. Nice, big, thick manual. And, uh, yep, it's just like all the others. You know, information about the Zoid parts, how to, how to, and at the end you get a painting and decal guide. Which, very nicely, you get some water slides in this. A lot more water slides than I've gotten in any of the other ones, which, to be honest, I've only gotten one other water slide, and that was in the Schneider, and that was a single water slide. So, a lot of water slides for people who want to do decals. I, I want to do these, but I'm not sure if I'm going to. I don't want to, like, root, screw up a paint job with them because I'm not that experienced with decals, but I'm going to say I'm probably going to use them. You get an advertisement for the Zoids Concept Art Book 3. And lastly, you get parts for the Zoid's core here, a little stand, and two figurines. Now these figurines are actually nicely painted, even better painted than the other ones that I've gotten in here. There we go, the camera's focusing. But very nicely painted little figurines, so that's cool. So, um, one last thing I wanted to say about this kit is uh, you can get it for about 150 to 160 on most websites with EMS shipping I think it's 160 with SAL shipping I think you're gonna be paying like well if you can get SAL shipping I don't know if you can on such a big kit 
I actually got a pretty good deal on mine. I bought it from an eBay seller called Tokyo Hobby. They had it for $125, and that's the cheapest I had found it, and still the cheapest I found it. So if you're interested in getting one, I'd order from there. Uh, it's $125, and I got it seven days after I ordered it, so that was pretty quick, too. Now, uh, despite the fact that this is a much more expensive than most of them, you know, most of them are around $100, this retailed for about $30 more than most do. Uh, it actually has less parts. The engineering is probably going to be a little better, and the fact that it has a full inner frame is uh, very nice and probably adds to the cost. But, uh, just in sheer number of parts, it has a decent amount less. If you just look at the number of runners, this has 31, as opposed to the Schneider, which I think had 45, and the Darkhorn, which was near 50. Uh, if I'm remembering correctly, but it's also a slightly smaller box. The square dimensions is the same, but it's not quite as tall. Darkhorn box went up to like right there, I think. Uh, but that should be all. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope it helped you out with deciding if you want this kit or not. I would highly recommend it as of right now. There are a few problems that I can see as of right now, but nothing... This makes me want to say, don't buy this kit. It's still a Berserk Fury, and it looks awesome. So, thanks a lot for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.